Thanks for coming. Um, so today I'm going to talk about uh, monorepo and menu repos. Um, and so first, uh, monorepos are uh, used by a lot of big companies like you know Facebook, uh, Google, and a bunch of other ones. Uh, but most of you are probably using uh, what I, I'm calling the uh, menu repositories uh, strategy, right? So I'm going. So in the first part, I'm going to um, talk a bit about what a mono repo is and, and what is uh, a menu repo. I'm going to talk about um, the difference between uh, the two and when you, you need to use one or uh, the other strategy. And then I'm going to talk about um, how I've been managing a lot of different projects using those uh, strategies. Um, so the big question is, um, so monorepos, they work really well for big companies, uh, but is it something that you can use for your projects and, and why would you want to do that uh, for you know, small project or small teams? Um, and, and you will say that my personal answer is yes, it's very, uh, interesting to use a mono repository uh, for uh, even the smallest uh, projects and, and with very small teams. So I've been using mono repos for the last five or six years now, uh, both for uh, open source projects, uh, but also for uh, private projects. So the mono uh, repository strategy is about um, storing all your code for a given project or for several projects into one repository, right? So when I'm talking about a repository, I'm talking about um, a directory, right? And the directory can be uh, um, uh, stored uh, in a source control um, software like Git or Subversion or whatever. Um, one such example is the Symfony uh, repository. Uh, so we have one big GitHub repository, uh, Symfony slash Symfony. And under that uh, repository, we have uh, more than 40 different projects. And when I say projects, I'm talking about uh, standalone projects. Right, and if you have a look at Drupal version eight, you will see that Drupal is using a lot of different Symfony components, uh, not you know all of them, right? And I'm saying that they are standalone because if you have a look at any one of them, you will see that it's a subdirectory under uh, the main repository, and in the in this directory you have a composer JSON file, so which means that it is totally independent with the test and documentation and everything. So Symfony is quite large. Um, we have a lot of uh, contributors, um, a lot of activity, um, and we will see that it helps a lot uh, when managing the repository, the fact that we have just one place with everything there. Um, but mono repositories are not only for big projects um, or projects are using only one language, right? For Symfony, we only have PHP, that's all. No JavaScript, no HTML, no CSS, or um, just a few files here and there. Uh, Blackfire is not an open source project. This is a private project, um, and it is much smaller. Um, it's just about 10 people um, and about 10 different projects, but we are also using a mono repository um, with many different languages. So we can see that um, we have uh, some C code, Go, PHP, JavaScript, um, and, 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 and some more. Um, um, so the documentation and the books are also part of the main uh, repository. The many re repo strategy is totally different. It's where you try to um, split your project into independent sub-projects, reusable sub-projects, right? And for each project, you create a new directory and a new uh, Git repository, right? 
one of the goal is to be able to reuse some part of a project to um, within another one, right? So you have 10 different projects and you try to um, factor your code so that you can reuse some libraries between different projects. And actually, Symfony is a monorepo, but also uh, we are also using uh, many repositories. So if you have a look at Symfony slash something, you will see that we also have 43 different repositories, and each one is actually an extraction of one directory from the main repository. So we were trying to get um, uh, the pros of both strategies. And I'm, I'm going to talk about that um, later on. So before talking about um, the many advantages of using uh, a monorepository, um, you need to understand that monorepos are not about code distribution or code deployment. It's really just about the development process, right? So it doesn't mean that you need to deploy all your project at once. It doesn't mean that you need to have one version strategy for all project within the monorepo. Um, it doesn't mean that you don't have many different teams working on different parts of uh, the project. Um, you can totally distribute several independent components, but also you know, develop everything in one tree, which is exactly what we're doing with Symfony, actually. Um, and it, the same goes if you have uh, a microservices oriented architecture where you have a lot of different small projects talking to each other. Uh, you can still use this strategy uh, for that kind of architecture. Um, and of course, a monorepo does not mean that you have, you know, tightly coupled code. Uh, the fact that your code is uh, coupled or not uh, is not related to how you actually store your code. It's more about uh, the way you are working with your code and, and the way you structure your code internally. So monorepositories are awesome. So the first, and, and that's the big one, uh, the first advantage is that you can make large backward incompatible changes very easily, right? Everything is in one place. Um, so I mean, if you have, you know, you want to make one big change, and the change has a lot of different impacts on different sub-projects, you can create one pull request. You can, you know, have one change where you can update everything in one go. Right? So you can change, for instance, an API endpoint. Uh, and then all the usages of this endpoint in the same pull request. And this is very important because you can have one, so if, if you have you know, other, other developers uh, reviewing your pull request, they can understand everything going on. So the main change and the impact on all the other parts of um, uh, the project. It also means that uh, if you have uh, tests, you can be sure that all the tests pass for all the sub-projects. If you have many repositories, you need to create several different pull requests. They are not linked together, uh, which means that you need to review several pull requests. You need to understand the interaction between uh, different changes. And then um, it's very complex to understand if you won't break something somewhere. Right, because everything is isolated. Um, and that, that's a great way, for instance, if you want to remove all the APIs, uh, all the calls coming from all the APIs, obsolete ones, uh, you can do that with confidence because, you know, if all the tests path, pass and, and it's very easy to grab uh, the project, trying to find all the uh, API uh, usages so that you can remove them in one go. Um, so I've talked a bit about that, uh, if you want to change an API endpoint. So especially if you are working with a microservices oriented architecture, um, you are doing that a lot. You have a lot of communication 
going on between different microservices. Um, if you can change everything in one pull request, it's, it's much easier, and the code review are also much easier. Uh, you don't need to coordinate uh, the merges between different repositories. Um, so, continuous integration. So, I'm, so, here I'm talking about different things. So, the first one is unit test. And for unit test, obviously, you don't care if you are using mono repos or many repos because, you know, they are isolated to just one sub project. But then, you probably have uh, integration tests, right? And for those, you need to be able to change all uh, the code. So, being able to have one pull request with all the code changes and then being able to run. Uh, your Jenkins uh, test for unit tests, but also uh, functional tests and integration tests. Be sure that everything is green before merging the pull request. Um, that helps a lot. Productivity increases as well uh, because there is no switch between repositories depending on the project you're working on. That's a small thing, but uh, uh, it, it's kind of important on you know on a daily basis if you are. If you need to switch between 10 different repositories all the time, um, at some point, uh, it's, it's um, annoying. Collaboration between teams becomes natural. So just because you have all the code in one repository, even if you are a PHP developer, and if you can have a look at uh, the C code or the Go code or whatever languages you are using, um, it's, uh, it becomes natural, you know, to collaborate between the teams. Uh, so even if I'm just a PHP developer, I can have a look at the code code, trying to figure out if I can also uh, change this part of the code. And that's what we saw with, with Blackfair. We have a, a bunch of PHP developers. They don't really uh, understand Go, but um, just because they, they were able to read Go pull request, because they, you know, they started by doing some small changes here and there, and at some point, they, um, they were able to do uh, more complex changes uh, on, on some part of the code they were not responsible for. So that means that developers can fix bugs in all projects um, as well. No one owns the code, which is sometimes a problem. You have different repositories, different teams, and you know, all the teams are very isolated. So if you need one change, you need to ask someone to make the change to create a pull request. And then after the pull request is done, you need to wait for the pull request to be merged. Then you need to wait for a release. Then you update your dependencies in your project, uh, pulling the new uh, version of the dependency. So it, it takes a lot of time. Um, it also means that you have less management because everything is centralized. So you basically have um, just one big repo uh, one um, Jenkins, one um, ticketing system, whatever you're using. Uh, so it's, it's uh, the overhead for management is really um, small. Dependency management is not an issue for your internal code, right? You don't need to manage a different version of your code uh, because everything is in one repository. So if you make one change, you can make changes everywhere. Whereas when you have many different repositories, then you need to manage different uh, versions, and then you need to pull a specific version in, in your code. But if you are not going to reuse that anywhere else because everything is stored in the same place, bam, uh, you don't need management, uh, dependency management anymore. So that helps a lot as well. So that's uh, why I think that you know mono repositories are very interesting, uh, but I can also easily demonstrate that many repositories uh, or the many repositories uh, strategy is also very um, useful. Um, you get clean boundaries between projects, right? It's very clear uh, what belongs to which project, which can be a problem uh, when you start a new project because when starting a new project, you don't really understand how you need to split the project into different sub-projects. At some point, you might have to actually merge sub-projects or split a project into two different sub-projects, which means that you would have to create new repositories or merge repositories, which is not always that easy. So, but if you know what you're doing, uh, you have clean mm -hmm. boundaries uh, very easily. Um, code is more reusable 
in other contexts. So if you have different big projects, you can create one uh, repo per um, library that you want to reuse. Access control is very easy as well. If you have contractors, for instance, and you want to give access to a contractor to only a sub-project or part of the project, that's very easy to achieve with many repositories, right? Um, and continuous integration can be simpler as well because, you know, in the monorepo strategy, whenever you make um, a change anywhere, uh, Jenkins is probably going to run all the tests, even if you've just changed a small uh, part of the code. Um, you can, of course, configure Jenkins so, so that, um, you know, um, depending on directory where uh, the changes happen, you only run a test uh, for this uh, directory and sub-project, but, you know, it means that it's more complex uh, to um, configure. Uh, and on the other end, um, for many repos, uh, unit tests are straightforward to configure because you have one Jenkins per sub-project, but integration test is uh, much more complex. So my conclusion is that uh, you should probably uh, use both a monorepository and many repositories. Uh, and that's actually the strategy, uh, the strategy that I've been using for the last five years uh, for almost all my projects. So, I've talked a bit about uh, the Symfony many repositories, but the same goes for Blackfair. We have a bunch of um, repositories, one for each sub-project, actually. Um, so I'm going to talk about how that works in, in practice now. So the mono repository is where the development actually happens. That's where we, cr we create a pull request. Um, and then we also have the many repositories and those are read only. And they are synchronized in real time. Right. Um, so, this one is read only, and then we need something in the middle that actually synchronizes uh, the monorepo with many repos, right? So we have one monorepository where we have different directories, and for some directories, we want to split them into individual repositories, right? That's the many repos. So for instance, for Symfony, we have the console uh, component. It's stored in, under source, Symfony, component, console, and then we extract this directory into its own uh, uh, repository, right? That's how it works. And that's the same for uh, all the other ones. So, um, so there is, the mono repository is not aware that there is the many repos, and the same goes um, for the many repositories. They don't know that there is the mono repo. So everything um, um, is like if you have the two strategy totally independently, which means that, so the many repositories um, are read only uh, so that if you want to make pull request on one many repo, that's possible, but then you need to move the pull request to the mono repo so that you can merge it, and then it is synchronized automatically back to the many repo. So let's take one ex example here. This is Symfony console component. So on the left side, you can see where it is stored uh, for the monorepo. And then we want to extract uh, the content of the console directory into uh, the Symfony slash console um, repository. So, there is, uh, so if we have a look at the Git history, so at the top, you have the history for uh, the main repo for uh, the console directory, and at the bottom, you have the same, but for um, uh, the many um, repos, so for the split of the console. You can see that the history is exactly the same. Same commit message, uh, same author, same committer, same dates. Everything is exactly the same. The only difference being um, the hash. Right, and, and the, the ash is different. I'm going to talk a bit about why uh, the ash uh, is different. So everyone is familiar with Git? 
who is not. OK, so everyone knows that Git is kind of like a file system, right? The big difference between Git and a file system is that Git knows nothing about the directory structure, right? Uh, Git is only about storing blobs. Right? So for instance, if we have a look at this commit, um, so and in Git, uh, Git stores blobs and trees and, and tags and some other things, but mainly blobs and trees. If you have a look at, uh, so if we run this command, you can see that for the Symfony uh, console component, we have a tree and a tree has a hash, right? So the tree is um, a pointer to the, to, uh, the content store, stored under the console directory. Now, if I do the same in Symfony console, for uh, uh, the hash equivalent of the one coming from Symfony Symfony, you will see that the tree has the same hash. And that makes sense because the content is exactly the same. Right? So that means that when we want to split uh, a directory from, or extract a directory from uh, the main repository to uh, the subtree split, the tree is exactly the same. So it does not consume any disk space, right? So what we are doing is that we are creating a commit pointing to this tree directly, right? Which is just a subtree of the main commit. And that's why the hash of the commit is different because the tree is not the same. So if, the, if you have the history, uh, so uh, at the top you can see the history of symphony slash symphony. So for each commit, you can see that we have the tree or nothing. For instance, the second one, we don't have anything under the console directory. So what we can do when we split, we, um, uh, so for each commit in the history, uh, we create a new commit and the commit points to a tree coming from the main um, repository. Um, and of course, we skip the commit if the tree does not exist. So there is no commit because there is nothing under uh, the console directory. Um, uh, and, and we do that for all the commits. And then we can reconnect the parents. And we have the new history, which is going to be exactly the same as if you would have created uh, the many repo directly without the, the mono repo. Okay, so that works because this is how uh, Git actually compute uh, the hash for a commit. So this one is not uh, that interesting. So, so if you run this command, uh, it gives you um, everything you need uh, to get the same commit. Uh, between uh, two different um, contents. So you have uh, the commit hash, the tree, the parent hashes, uh, the author, the committer, and uh, the body. The body being the subject and everything below. Right. If you have exactly the same values, you're going to have the same hash, the same SHA-1. And to do that with um, <clears throat> git, there is a command for that, git subtree split, um, which was added uh, in git uh, by default uh, two or three years ago. So git subtree has many subcommands, actually. It's not just about git subtree split. You also have git subtree merge and, and a bunch of other ones. But I've only ever used uh, git subtree split. And I'm going to explain why. Um, so by default, git subtree allows you to, um, uh, to um, sorry, um, to synchronize two different repositories both ways, right? So you can commit when it, wh wherever you want, and then you can merge uh, from uh, one um, repository to uh, the other one and uh, the other way around. But doing that means that uh, 
Git needs to store some metadata about the merges so it knows where, what to merge and, and when. And I wanted to avoid that because I don't want the monorepository to be aware of the mini repos and the other way around. Right? So that's why I want to have uh, the split uh, only one way, right? from the monorepo to the mini repos. So, um, so we started to use uh, Git separate split before it was added uh, to Git um, five years ago or six years ago now. Um, but the, f the fact that we are only using split means that, uh, and not merge, it means that uh, the performance was really bad. Because whenever we add a new commit uh, to the mono repository, we need to start from scratch all the many repository uh, splits. It takes a lot of time. How much time? So this is the command that you can use to split uh, the console component uh, of Symfony from the main repo. You can see that it takes more than 15 minutes from scratch on my laptop, which is, you know, doesn't make any sense. So we have so many commits uh, going on in Symfony that that's not scalable. That doesn't work. Um, so it means that Okay, so, and, and that's for, so on average it takes 10 minutes from scratch, but then because we have some cache, uh, and that's not the case by default, so I'm going to explain how to get the cache, then uh, it took uh, around two minutes uh, to have, uh, uh, you know, the difference between uh, the current state and the new state, right? Two minutes is also uh, a large amount of time. And those two minutes, uh, they depend uh, on the size of the repository, which means that it, it's getting slower and slower over time. So, um, at the beginning um, for Symfony, we, um, we started to split only every night. So it was not uh, real time, it was every night. But the thing is, so at first it took, uh, you know, 10, not 10 minutes, but one hour, and then two hours, and then six hours, and then more than a day to actually uh, split the repository, so it was not manage manageable. Um, and, and the problem is that splitting with git subtree, um, so it, it, it actually spends most of the time creating sub-processes, so basically doing nothing. So git subtree uses the plumbing commands of a git, so it executes almost 10 git subcommands for each commit. So you can imagine that, you know, at scale, um, that's a huge problem. Nowadays, Symfony has more than 400 different splits. So doing that from scratch uh, just doesn't work. So you can also use this other command. Uh, there are a lot of uh, blog posts um, everywhere on the, on, on the web, uh, git filter branch. It is much faster. It takes almost two, um, less than two minutes uh, for the same uh, split. The problem here is that <clears throat> you need to start from scratch every time because there is no way to cache anything. And then the other problem is that it actually overrides uh, your current master branch that you are splitting, which is not the case uh, with the uh, git separate split. As you can see, the last um, um, option is actually a branch where you want all the commits to be stored, which helps. So, uh, what we did at first is that we optimized uh, git separate split. Uh, the first um, thing that we did five years ago was to actually move from bin bash to bin sh. It was a huge boost. So you don't need to do that anymore. It's done now by default. The second one is that because the way subtree split works by default, it caches um, the association between uh, the hash in the main repo and uh, the hash in uh, the split repo, but at the end of the process, it just trashes everything. So we just commented the line um, where it actually deletes the cache, and all of a sudden it was much faster. Um, so, it, it helped, um, um, but you know, as Symfony um, grows, um, it, uh, it was not enough anymore. 
it's very slow. We need, we need a lot of disk space. Uh, I think it was something like uh, 15 gigabytes for uh, uh, Symfony. Um, and, and we needed a lot of inodes. So a few months ago, um, I decided to actually rewrote the command uh, with go and libgit2. And as you can see, the uh, performance numbers um, speak for themselves. Uh, so now we can, you know, uh, start from scratch, and so it's not one minute, it's actually 10 minutes. Um, and, and then incremental splits, it's less than 10 milliseconds. And, and those splits, they do not depend anymore on the size of the repository. Just depend on the number of commits that you want to split. So, for, so we have four, more than 400 different splits for Symfony. Uh, doing uh, the splits from scratch, it takes less than 10 minutes, right? Uh, using subtree split, um, it took more than a week. Right? Um, disk, disk space, uh, not that much, and now you understand why, because we are mainly creating commits pointing to the same trees, so we have just one repository uh, with everything inside. So, and, 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 and this is more than just split, split SH is more than just um, uh, a write of uh, git subtree split. We added a lot of um, different um, features uh, to help manage those kind of uh, repositories. So the first one is that we have a tool um, to automatically uh, move pull requests from a subtree split to the main repository. Uh, it's even better than that. I think I'm going to talk about that later on. Anyway, so it's even better than that because uh, we try very hard to keep all the information so that when you actually merge a pull request on the mono repository and then there is a split again, um, the ashes for the commits are exactly the same as the ones coming from uh, the pull request, the initial pull request, which, mean, which means that if you are using GitHub, uh, the status is going to be merged and not closed, which is nice. Which means that from the contributor's uh, point of view, it doesn't need to be aware of the fact that we actually move the pull request somewhere else and then synchronize back. Um, from his point of view, you just merge the pull request directly. Continuous integration and continuous deployment um, can happen uh, anywhere, and that's because so we have a tool that helps you tag um, uh, sub projects. So you can so for instance for Symfony, and and that's optional actually. But for Symfony, whenever we make a release for uh, Symfony, we also release all the components. But I don't want to manage all the tags for all the components. So when we have uh, a tag for the main repo, we have a tool that helps us um, uh, synchronize the tags as well, automatically, and being sure that we actually tag the same commits. Right. Access control just works. So if you want to give uh, access to one sub-project to some contractors, you can do that really easily, they can create a pull request directly on sub-project, you can move the, um, the, um, the pull request, uh, that works. Um, okay, I've already talked about that. Uh, we have a full API to manage a repository, so for instance, we have, you can ask the tool, so for this commit, uh, what is the, the hash, the equivalent for uh, the monorepo or the other way around? So, Things like that. Uh, <clears throat> so tagging, we have PGP support as well. Um, sanity checker, uh, so that just to be sure that uh, the state of the many repositories are uh, exactly the same as the monarch repositories. So same tags, uh, that you know, uh, everything is up to date, branches, and we also have uh, packages uh, support. We also have compatibility mode uh, for all versions of Subtree Split. I don't care about that. So, and, and Blackfire, for instance, is using all those features. So we have one big repository with everything inside. 
we have one contractor working on one project. Uh, some projects are even open source, right? So uh, that's also something that you can use. Uh, you have one project, one so small library you want to open source. You don't need to extract that uh, because, you know, it's, it's a nightmare. Uh, it's, it means overhead. You can just, you know, subtree split and just works. Uh, and you can see that some uh, uh, sub-projects, we always release them as a bunch, or, and for other ones, uh, we just have different um, release strategies. Do you want a small demonstration? Yes? Okay. <clears throat> um, hopefully, the Wi-Fi is going to work. Uh, can you see my screen? No. Uh, let's mirror uh, the screens. Okay. Yes. Is it big enough? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the first step is so we have a bunch of subcommands. Uh, uh, project list, for instance. So this is where we're going to, okay, so the Wi-Fi is quite slow. Okay, I'm going to switch to 3G. Okay. So, uh, Split SH is used by Symfony, it's used by Blackfair, of course. It's also used by other open source projects like um, Laravel and PHPBB. Um, okay, as you can see here, uh, Silex, uh, the Symfony Polyfill. And, uh, so I also started to uh, create one for Drupal. Uh, uh, it works really well. <coughs> So the configuration, so I can show you the configuration for um, uh, the Symfony project, for instance. Um, that's a JSON file, really, so nothing really, uh, okay, that's really slow, okay. Okay, 10 is not enough, sorry. So basically, this is a JSON uh, file where uh, we say, okay, I want to split this directory and I want to be able to push that into this GitHub uh, repository. I only want to split those branches and I want to ignore those tags. Uh, that's for uh, the sanity checker because we did not have uh, tags for Symfony 2.0, so we want to ignore them. We don't want to synchronize them between uh, the repositories. Um, and I'm going to show uh, something more interesting. Uh, the Blackfair one is interesting because uh, we are doing... Uh oh, so the commit is there because... So it was one of uh, the optimization that we had for the git subtree split command. Uh, so basically it says that uh, instead of starting the split from commit one, we want to start from this hash, right? Because, you know, some of the components, they were added, uh, yeah, years later. So you don't need to split everything before because we know there is nothing uh, in there. So I think it's not, uh, it's, uh, I'm sure it's not that useful anymore nowadays. Uh, but it was very useful when we were using uh, Git separate split. So here for, um, yes, this one for instance. So signify is a small Go uh, binary um, that we have, and basically it is um, used to sign uh, requests, whatever. Anyway, so here uh, we want to split more than one repository, uh, one directory, um, and that's not possible with git uh, subtree split, actually. Uh, so we want to split the signify directory and we want to put the files directly under the root directory of the new uh, repository. We also want to split this directory 
and we want to put that under subtree splits, blah, blah, and then this one as well. We are doing that because the last two directories are actually tests shared by many different sub-projects, right? So we get, you know, the best of uh, the both worlds where we can easily uh, recreate repositories and move things around really easily. Okay, so now uh, the main the main command is split, of course, so you can get a list of the last um, splits. So here I'm under the Symfony directory, so I have uh, an environment variable saying that I want to work with the Symfony uh, project here. So that's why I don't, uh, I don't need to uh, say minus minus project equals Symfony. Uh, so here you can see um, what's going on behind the scene. So API means that uh, the split was triggered via the API. Uh, Git means that uh, we had um, a webhook uh, coming from GitHub. So you can see that it takes anywhere between one milliseconds to 10 milliseconds to actually split uh, this um, thing. And here you have a bunch of other information. So duration is more than several seconds because uh, it takes a lot of time to push uh, the new version to GitHub. It takes a lot of time, unfortunately. And then here you can see the number of commits that were uh, traversed by the tool, the number of commits that were actually created by the tool and things like that. Okay, let's create a split. So I'm going to split, um, so I'm going to create a split via the API. Uh, I want to split console master and I want to watch it real time. So here uh, we created an API call and done, right? So it's, it's real time, it's, it's really fast, right? Uh, you can say I want to split everything under console, so all the branches um, and should be fast as well, done. Um, now, so that's the first part of the tool. Um, uh, so I talked about uh, uh, the sanity checker, so we can say I want to check that everything is fine uh, for uh, all the projects and I'm going to uh, do that for uh, Silex because I have less um, things there. Uh, I want to watch the result. So here it's going to actually check that tags, uh, not tags actually here, but that the branch, the the, the the, the tips are actually the same uh, between the, the main repo and the split one. I can add minus minus tags and now it's going to check that the tags are also synchronized between, um, uh, between the repositories. Okay. Um, so if you want to uh, tag something, you can say tag sync, synchronize if you want to synchronize a tag or if you want to create a tag, you can say blah, blah, whatever. And if you say minus s, it's going to uh, uh, GPG sign all the, the tags. Um, okay, we also have an option, uh, which is tag sync packages. And I'm going to explain why. So whenever you create a tag on GitHub, uh, there is a webhook uh, so there is a call from GitHub to packages so that packages can actually update the version. The thing is, SplitSH is creating 50 different tags at the same time, which means 50 different requests, API requests from GitHub to packages, and that doesn't work. It crashes packages, which means that most of the tags are not on packages, which is really uh, bad. So this command just synchronizes and, 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 and check if, if the tag exists on packages. If not, it triggers a call to the API on packages so to, to update uh, the tags. Okay, uh, now I'm going to do something that I should probably not do. Um, 
So this is a symphony pull request. I have one here. And we are, we are going to merge it and see what happens. So here, this pull request, and it's not going to work, probably. <laughs> so this pull request is about uh, a change under source, sorry, source symphony component debug, right? All the files, which means that it should update symphony slash debug. This one is on symphony 2.7, so we're going to go to 2.7 here. So right now you can see that the last commit was on uh, in March. Okay. I think it's going to, t it's going to take some time because so G8 is uh, a small tool uh, used by our Symfony core team to help us merge pull requests. So we're not using uh, the green uh, button on GitHub. It does a lot of different checks to be sure that uh, everything is okay before actually merging anything. Uh, it's also a, a, a nice tool uh, because, you know, if, if the pull request should have been merged into 2.3, for instance, I can say GH merge uh, switch 2.3, and it does the work automatically uh, switching branches so that we don't need to ask, you know, contributors to actually create a new pull request, changing the base uh, 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 branch and so on. So, so we're checking that uh, the core team actually accepted uh, uh, the pull request, tests are okay, proofing is okay, so we're going to fetch the branch uh, and, and do the merge. Okay. <laughs> Your phone is really slow. What do you mean? Do we have a tool for that? So this, if you want to use PDSH after that, that's very easy because you can, ah, and keep the history? Yeah, sure. So we don't have, I don't have any tool for that because I've always created a monorepo first. So I've, I've never been in a situation where I wanted to actually aggregate uh, different repositories, but so that's a bug. That's a bug? It's a bug. Uh, so we need a category because uh, then we have uh, the change logs are, are, are created automatically based on those information. Um, but I think it's, 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 it's very easy to actually move a repo to one directory of another repository. So yes, Nicholas? Yeah, very easy. If you don't know how, you can ask this guy. Um, but yeah, it should not be uh, that complex. And, and the great thing is that when you have this main big repo and you split it again, you're going to have the exact same hashes for all the commits that you had before. Yes. Okay, so I want to send a, a nice message to Nicholas. Thank you. <laughs> then I push the changes to uh, GitHub. Yes. Yes. We're pushing. Yes, and I can monitor the split. Doesn't exist yet, so we need to uh, wait for GitHub to actually make a call. We are fetch fetching the new stuff, and you know, we are mainly fetching there. So that's just, yeah, GitHub being really slow nowadays. I mean, I I'm not sure for you, but for me, uh, in the last couple of months, GitHub has been really slow. And bam, three milliseconds. Go back here. Debug, refresh. <gasps> yes, that works. Never do that at all. Okay. 
Okay, let's go back here. Okay, actually that's that's uh, uh, that's all for today. So split SSH is used nowadays by uh, Laravel, Symfony, PHP, BB. Uh, it might be used by Drupal. If if you think that helps, uh, that's totally possible. Um, it it's going to be released as open source only if there is some interest in the community because, you know, it, it means a lot of time to actually uh, make it uh, available as an open source project. If Drupal is interested, I can host that on our server. That's not, no problem. Uh, doesn't consume any resource, so that's uh, a no-brainer, really. Uh, anyway, so if you're interested, uh, you can shoot me an email. Uh, my email is there. Uh, or you can come and we can talk about that. I'm here for the last, uh, for the next couple of days. Uh, that's it, thank you.